Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here, and I'm here once again with my Shopsmith bandsaw, a bandsaw that was introduced in 1956 by the same guys that invented the Shopsmith Mark V a little bit earlier in that decade. Now, part of their thinking when they designed this tool was to make it as easy as possible to use, and their thinking was the, the new do-it-yourselfer movement that was coming out after World War II, that those folks would be interested in using bandsaws, not so much having to learn the maintenance of a bandsaw. And so they came up with a couple unique features that are in fact patented. Now here's where things get frustrating. In 1956, Popular Science Magazine ran an article on what made this bandsaw unique. And what's fascinating is since then, there's been total radio silence. If you read Fine Woodworking Magazine, Better Homes and Gardens Wood Magazine, you name the woodworking publication, every year they always come out with an article on how to tune your bandsaw, and none of those articles ever address what makes this bandsaw different. So that's the purpose of this video. If you happen to own Shopsmith uh, equipment and the Shopsmith bandsaw, and maybe have been frustrated after reading one of those articles, we're gonna talk about what makes this machine different, and in my opinion, superior. So a couple things I mentioned in an earlier video. I mentioned the fact that this bandsaw does not have a crowned wheel. Instead, the bottom wheel is perfectly flat, and depending upon when it was made, the top wheel is either flat or has a slight conical shape to it. Um, you'd, you'd have a hard time measuring it, but it's there. And uh, this upper wheel, instead of being adjustable as everybody else's bandsaw has to be in order to provide you adjustments for tracking, this upper wheel is tilted backwards. It's got a slight cant. And this is part of the patent, the patent for an auto tracking bandsaw. The idea is when you put your blade on this bandsaw, it's going to want to track toward the back. And in fact, if there was something or nothing there to stop it, it would track all the way off the back of the upper wheel. So what prevents that is over here, something called the auto track bearings. Now, in uh, 1956, that was just a single bronze bushing actually, and you had to, had to keep it well lubricated. And a problem when you, put, <laughs> when you put something oily or greasy into this environment with dust, it just attracts dust and stops working. So that was one of the upgrades. And instead of uh, using those bronze bushings, it, they are now ball bearings. But there's a pair of ball bearings and the blade runs to the center of those two, it just kind of runs in that groove. The tensioning is unique. Instead of having a big knob and a plate that is moving that upper, uh, upper shaft, shaft, the arm here is where we are supporting the upper wheel. Now here's the next interesting feature of the patent. When the engineers behind this uh, were testing this, what they discovered was when you tensioned the blade by raising up this wheel, and you do that by tightening a bolt right here, it was putting on the wide blades, when you got enough tension on them, it was putting too much tension against the bearings. The, the blade was running too hard against the bearings. So they engineered into this arm some flex. So when you over tighten this or tighten it up for a big blade, that upper wheel will actually begin to tilt forward. Now why that's critical to understand is if you, especially if you over tension this, but if you store this bandsaw under tension over time, you can actually remove that slight tilt from the upper wheel. Now the great news is it's, it's easy to restore, but uh, let's get a view of, of how much of a tilt we're talking here. So I have an aluminum uh, straight edge clamp. We'll use this as a straight edge. And uh, you know, so this, this goes to the thing that you've read about the need for wheels to be coplanar, meaning that the wheels need to be in perfectly straight alignment. Some bandsaws, you may have to uh, add some spacers on, on uh, bearing blocks or even on motors, and uh, totally unnecessary here with the Shopsmith bandsaw. Now here's what we're going to see. The straight edge will be against the bottom rim of the bottom wheel, and it'll be touching the bottom rim of the top wheel. But because it has a slight angle to it, that's gonna be pushing it away ever so slightly from the top of the bottom rim, 
and we're going to have a space here. So let's take a look. So I'm touching here, I'm touching here, I've got a millimeter space there, but here at the top, there's a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch. So we're looking at, uh, let's just call it, we'll call it five millimeters for our uh, Canadian friends. Yeah, but there's a gap. Now, how do we get that if we've lost it, if our bandsaw has been stored under tension? Well, this is going to seem crude and crazy, but let me show you. It's uh, not unlike the way you adjust an institutional hinge on a cabinet. You're going to grab a hold of the bottom, uh, the, the bottom of the upper wheel, and you're going to put a little bit of pressure against it here. And with the palm of your hand, I just kind of grip the top of the saw. You're just going to apply a little bit of a tweaking motion to it. Um, and you might think, well, gosh, I'm bending it. No, you're not. You're straightening it. It was already supposed to have the bend in it. So you're returning it to the condition that it was intended. Beautiful. All right. So <clears throat> it's not something that you're going to have to plan on doing. You know, gosh, do you have to do this every uh, so many hours of use? No. But if you happen to notice that your blades, maybe you're wanting to drift away from the backup bearings, um, that could be exactly the issue that you're having. Okay, I think this video is long enough for now. Um, we'll come back and do another video talking about the next feature that was patented on this bandsaw and a few other changes that have happened over the years. But for now, hopefully that'll solve if you're having any problems with your blade tracking properly, which again is towards the back and against the bearing. Regardless of the thickness or width of your bandsaw blade, they all track to the exact same place on the bandsaw. That means over here, our backup bearing, both top and bottom, do not need to be adjusted. Now, if, if somebody's messed with it and things are out of whack, there is a way to get it back to the way it was supposed to be, and we'll talk about that in a future video. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and subscribe. It don't cost nothing and uh, make it a great week.